Before we begin this question, let's look at what happens when a loop of wire, or a coil, rotates in a magnetic field. Imagine my magnetic field is from left to right as shown by this blue line, or by showing this by the series of blue lines on the right. Initially, the area of the coil that's capturing field lines in this diagram is zero. The area or the face of those windings is parallel to the magnetic field, so there is no flux. It's not capturing any field lines. Let's imagine that the coil starts perpendicular to the field lines, and it's capturing the most flux. So on our graph below, the red line or this orangey colored line will represent the flux that's being captured. Initially, it's at a maximum value, and as the coil starts to rotate, it captures fewer and fewer field lines until it's parallel to the magnetic field where the flux is zero. Then it continues to rotate, capturing more and more in the other direction as it's now facing to the left. And vice versa, as it starts to collapse again, it goes back to zero when it's parallel to the field lines. Now you can see on this graph that the flux changes the most rapidly where the line is steepest. And we know that the quicker the flux changes, the more the EMF, the greater the induced EMF will be. So hence the green line above it. Initially, there is no induced EMF because the flux is barely changing. Then as it starts to rotate to its flat position, the EMF is at a maximum value goes back to zero and flips back to the other side. The period of this sinusoidal wave that we see, this green line, depends on how quickly we're changing the orientation of the loop. If the loop changes more rapidly, the period will be smaller. So now let's look at our question and see if we can figure out the answer. So here's our graph showing our induced EMF for an AC generator as it's rotating with time. The question states, how would this graph change if both the number of turns on the armature and the frequency of rotation is doubled? Well, let's look at our equation. We see in our formula that the induced EMF depends directly on the number of turns. So if I double the number of turns, the maximum induced EMF should also double. So it should reach a higher peak. So that takes care of the first part. What about the frequency of rotation? If you remember back to grade 11, frequency and period are inversely related to each other. So if the frequency goes up, the period, how long it takes to change, goes down. So if we double the frequency, we half the time. And according to this equation, we see that if we half the time, we double the EMF. So not only will the graph become half the period, twice as fast, it will also double due to this change in frequency. So what does our final answer look like? Well, if I drag this graph in and label it, E1 is my initial EMF, which is what I've got above, and E2 you see it's happening more rapidly, twice as fast, and it's twice as big. In fact, it should be four times as big because we're changing T as well as N. But the general shape is as follows. 